Using BiPAP with the Hamilton T1, my preferred mode is NIVST, which stands for non-invasive ventilation, spontaneous time. You can also use the NIV mode, which is non-invasive ventilation. The biggest difference between NIVST and NIV is NIVST, we set a immediate backup rate, which has pressure control time cycle breaths. Whereas with NIV, they're all pressure supported flow cycle breaths and the backup ventilation is going to trigger off of your apnea alarm, which is about 20 seconds. It's a fair bit of time where the patient's apneic before it'll kick in. If you use NIVST, you set a backup rate, it'll immediately kick in if the patient goes apneic for 20, 30 seconds, and then they decide to start breathing again, they'll flip back over to pressure supported flow cycle breaths. So that's why I like using ST mode over the NIV. We get to that, you just come over here and you select NIVST, which is already selected. We're going to hit cancel and go to your controls. Uh, what you're going to find with the Hamilton defaults, it's going to default to a pressure, instrument pressure of 15 and a PEEP of 5, which I will say is incredibly high and a very bad starting point. That's actually going to be a total instrument pressure or an IPAP or instrument positive area pressure of 20 to start. And that's actually the maximum I recommend for non-invasive just because you're going to have increased gastric insufflation when you use pressures that high or greater. So I actually like starting most of my patients, not all, but most, at a PEEP of 5. This is an additive pressure and what you can tell that is, is that delta sign or the triangle in front of the pins tells you that that pressure is always going to be on top of the PP you set. So the actual instrument pressure you're going to deliver with a instrument pressure of 5 with a PP of 5 is going to be 10 to start. And that's usually a pretty good starting point. Generally a lot of times I'll leave the set rate and eye time on NIVST and that is only going to apply if the patient starts stops triggering their own breaths. That is only going to be pressure control time cycle breaths when the patient is not triggering the breaths. Every other breath will be pressure supported, flow cycled, and flow cycling on the Hamilton T1 is controlled with the ETS percent setting. And that's extra trigger sensitivity and that's under your more tab. So the biggest mistake I see with BiPAP in general is people don't realize that the ETS percent setting and the P-ramp are actually there. And what your ETS is going to determine is the length of the breath that the patient gives. And a lot of times one of the most common complaints with your BiPAP or non-invasive patients is it's still pushing the breath in while you're trying to breathe out, which is incredibly uncomfortable. And the way that works is you increase the percent setting that will decrease the length of the breath, or if the breath is too long, you decrease the percent setting and that will make the breath longer. The opposite of what makes sense logically to me. The P-ramp under the more tab is actually how fast the breath goes in. If it's a really low P ramp, like zero milliseconds, that means the breath's gonna go in super fast. So if you have a patient that's breathing very deeply, they're very air hungry, you want a much lower P ramp versus the patient's just kind of relaxing. They may want it to go in a little bit slower so it doesn't overpressurize the system. Once those are dialed in, then I start messing with my instrument pressure and my PEEP setting. If I want to improve oxygenation, a fast way to do it is to increase your FiO2, but I also want to come up on my PEEP or CPAP setting because that's going to increase your functional residual capacity and your mean airway pressure. Hold that volume of higher concentration gas in your lungs to allow for that diffusion at the alveolar capillary membrane. And then once their SpO2 gets up to goal, we can start backing off our FiO2. And if I want to improve ventilation, the rate that we set here is only if the patient stops breathing altogether, so that's a backup. So ultimately, the only way to improve our minute ventilation or change our minute ventilation is to adjust our inspiratory pressure. So if I want a higher tidal volume and therefore a bigger minute volume, I would increase my inspiratory pressure, say take it up to 10. So an inspiratory pressure of 10 and a PEEP of 5 is going to take my peak airway pressure to 15 on this ventilator. It's also going to increase my tidal volume and thereby increase my minute ventilation. I'll blow off more CO2. If I wanted less, I would decrease the inspiratory pressure. You always want to have, ideally, It'll work for everybody, at least a difference of five between your inspiratory pressure and your PEEP itself because that's what generates the tidal volume itself. The lowest you'll be able to go on NIVST is three. I will say if you're having a really hard time dialing in your patient and you just can't figure out BiPAP, switch the patient to NIV and put them into CPAP. You can't physically do CPAP on the NIVST mode because you have to set a pressure or inspiratory pressure of at least three, but PEEP and CPAP are synonymous, so the patient has to be breathing on their own, and all CPAP is, is PEEP, and that's it. And a lot of times patients will tolerate that if they won't tolerate the BiPAP. 